So I'm just gonna go through and talk about a few different things. This isn't gonna be too weighty, hopefully. Just gonna be a, a little conversation about some different things I think are interesting about programming. So my name's Jim, hopefully you know that already. <laughs> so one thing I like to talk about is programming is really about problem solving. A lot of people think it's about, you know, they're not sure what it's about. They think it's about computers, but it's really not just about computers. So astronomy, for example, is not about telescopes, right? Astronomy is about mm -hmm. stars. In the same way, computer programming or computer science isn't necessarily about computers. It's about solving problems with computers in the same way you solve problems with telescopes in astronomy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I think that's kind of a big thing. So really what it, you're looking at doing is learning how to use the right tools in the right way for each problem. And so have you ever heard the analogy when your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? When you only have a certain tools you know how to use, you tend to use them wrong because you just use them for everything. And so we're going to learn how to use some different tools and different things and do different things to fix different problems. Also, we're looking at how to find the best way between two points. So we have wherever we're starting at, we want to get to a destination. And that destination is not always a straight line. Sometimes there's a few steps we have to go through to get there in order to the best way. And the best way changes. Sometimes the idea for the best way is going to be the quickest way, right? If it's a game, you want to be fast. You don't want people waiting for it. Sometimes it's the most secure way if you're trying to uh, secure data. Sometimes it's the most reliable way. So you have to understand some of the different gives and takes in trying to solve some of these problems. So really, programming comes down to it's like creating a recipe for the computer to follow. All right. Have you ever cooked anything before? Yes. Yeah. So it, it, it's like writing your own recipe. So you, when you start out cooking, you get a recipe and you follow the directions in the recipe. But when you get good at cooking, you can write your own recipe and give it to somebody else and they'll make it. And so that's what really we're doing with the computer is we're writing the recipes and we're giving that recipe to the computer to follow. And then the computer is going to make whatever recipe you give it. And so if you like peanut butter jelly sandwiches, you can give it that peanut butter jelly sandwich recipe and it'll make it for you every single time. But sometimes, you know, you want to try something different. And so that's where you can get creative as a computer programmer. So computers are really good at two things. They're good at following directions. You give it a set of directions, it'll follow that same directions every single time. So it makes them great at like math, right? Math's pretty linear following directions. And they're really, really fast. So if you have a, an operation that takes, you know, maybe it's some math, for example. Math's a good example. If you have a set of math problems you're trying to solve and it takes you a while to do, if you can tell the computer how to do it, it can solve that problem really, really, really fast if you can give it a set of directions that will tell it how to get there. So those are really the two key things for computers. If you can think about it, it's a matter of giving it directions and then it will get there really fast. If you give it bad directions, it'll get where you told it to go, but probably not where you want it to go, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's really the two key things to think about. So let's talk a little about why you might want to learn computer programming. Obviously, you already have a few reasons that you want to learn, but let's talk about some of the other cool reasons to learn computer programming. This is something I think is really big and important, is we live in a world full of technology, right? I mean, you've got a computer in front of you. You've probably got a computer on your wrist, a computer in your pocket, right? Uh, you go to the store, there's computers there, there's computers everywhere, right? And those computers are not necessarily, you know, we think about like our laptops or our desktops, but they're also, like I said, in, in watches, in your TV, in your refrigerator. Everything around us is has computers in it. And programming is the science of the technology. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so just like we learn chemistry or physics or earth sciences to understand the world around us, Today, our world is made up of technology, and so we learn programming as the science of that technology of the world we live in. Also, programming helps us automate the boring, the boring and repetitive tasks. So this is important even if you, like let's say, you're not interested in being a computer programmer as your career or really doing that as a job or even as a hobby. There'll come a point in your life where you'll be like, oh, man, this is kind of boring and repetitive, and i got to do this same, same thing over and over and over and over again. And you're going to say, oh, wait, that's right. I learned how to program, and you're going to be able to write a little program, a little, sh a little short program to do something for you, and it's going to make you more productive because it's going to solve that problem that's you know, a boring, repetitive task, but it can do it really fast because computers are good at doing things really fast. And, you know, maybe you do want to get involved in software development. It's big business. There's a lot of money to be made off games and apps and uh, 
you know, other things related to software development. Even if you're not a software developer, maybe you want to manage software developers or you have an idea for an app and you want to pay somebody else to make the app, there's a lot of money to be made in programming. Now, also, I think that the fundamentally, it comes down to being a problem solver, right, and solving problems. And so everybody can be a better problem solver. And so you can take the fundamentals of what we're learning about how to look at problems differently and break them down and apply them in other ways to be a better problem solver in general. I think most importantly, programming is a lot of fun. I, I love it. I've been programming since, gosh, second grade, third grade, something like that. <laughs> so uh, I've been a professional software developer for over 20 years, and it is, I think, a blast. It's one of, and I do it for fun as a hobby in the evenings, and I do it for my job. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's great fun. It's a great way to, uh, to do things. So how much do you know about Delphi? Do you know much about Delphi? Well, uh, one thing I know about Delphi is that, well, first of all, my dad works for, um, like does things with Delphi. That's, that's, and also I think it's like a, I think it's like a programming program. Yep, it's a programming language, exactly. So there's a lot of different programming languages out there, which are a programming language is the language we use as humans to tell the computer what to do. So you, you make a programming language, you write a program in a programming language, and then the computer can then turn that into computer language so the computer knows how to do what you have to do. So there's a lot of different programming languages out there, so I'm going to talk a little why why we're learning Delphi, besides the fact you know, your dad works with it, <laughs> which, you know, I work with it too, but uh, I, I think that there's a, a lot of advantages or a lot of reasons to use Delphi. One of the things is Delphi works everywhere. You can build apps for iPhones, for Android phones, for Windows computers, for Mac computers. You can build web apps that run in browsers. You can build apps that run on Linux servers. You can build apps that work with databases. It just, it's very... Uh, flexible in where it works and what kind of what it works with. It, well, and it's very flexible. It, the kind of apps you can make with it are very. Uh, you can pretty much make any kind of app with it. Uh, so there, you can make games with it. You can make uh, business applications with it. That's probably the biggest thing we see is people making business applications like uh, point of sale systems. You know, like you go to the store and they're ringing up your order. Programs like that are written in Delphi quite often, or maybe. A software someone will use in the office will be written with Delphi, you know, for their day-to-day -day job. Some of the software that's involved with the Mars rover was written with Delphi. The Cassini space probe was written with Delphi. Um, I was just talking to some guys that build software used in nuclear power plants written with Delphi. Another guy that does software for doing analysis of earthquakes written with Delphi. So it, it's everywhere. It's used in all sorts of different things. Um, so, so there are other types of programming languages that are specialized in, for example, game development or um, web development or something like that. But Delphi is a general purpose programming language. It can be used for any kind of program you want to do, really. And it's easy to read. I think this is really important. So Delphi is based on words. It uses words to express it, whereas Java, JavaScript, C, all these other, a lot of these other languages use symbols. And so we see right here we have the same equivalent code written in C versus Delphi. And C, you see, it uses these curly braces and parentheses a lot more than in Delphi. It says, if X equals 1, then begin, write 1, end. You know, you can read that in English, and it makes sense. Where the other one, you have to think, okay, this curly brace means this, this means that. And so there's a little more, uh, it makes it harder to read, harder to understand. Uh, for working with all the other languages. Also, something that's interesting is that Delphi is based on Pascal, which is another language, and that was actually created to teach good programming practices. So at its core, it was designed to be easy to understand and to help you be a better programmer. And so using that, a programming language that was created in that for that purpose, makes you a better programmer in general. Plus, it's the, through the evolution, it's become a really, really powerful programming language.
So you can get more done in less time. It's a really productive programming language, which is great because, you know, we don't always never have as much time as we'd like to to do different things. And this is a really cool thing is you don't need to copy yourself. So a lot of other programming languages, if you want to build something for Android and iPhone, you end up writing the same program twice for strange, bizarre reasons I don't understand. But with Delphi, you can write a program once and make that an Android phone application, a Windows application, a iPhone application, so on and so forth. And another thing that's really cool about it is it's based on this idea of components. And so there's all these little pieces of reusable code that you can put on your form to add features. And there are components for pretty much everything. You know, you're like, oh, I want to connect to Facebook. Well, there's a Facebook component. We'll just put that down there and now we can connect to Facebook, right? So all these um, components make it really easy for you to get things done quicker. And it's easy, it's easier to learn and use than most other programming languages. All right, any questions on that? Mm, nope. Nope, it's pretty basic stuff, but I just thought it would be kind of good to talk about some of these things. Mm.